history in the making, man. Man, this like I said, this is the start of a beautiful thing. This is it right here. Isaac Evans. Yeah, about to take over the world. Take it out. Few are called. Chosen are few. So I, don't, right? I don't even know how to. Something like that. Yeah. One of the last business that I owned before I started full time <laughs> with uh, comedy and acting, uh, I was uh, delivering building materials. I got to the store and they were like, hey, you know where you're going today? <laughs> I'm like, nah, I'm delivering something for a swimming pool. I know that. They're like, yeah, but who else? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, Val Warner. <laughs> <laughs> 2010. It's a great year for me. It's when everything started connecting. So I think an important thing to note for me and my path is that I started out in acting like 1999. I went through the acting for like 10 years from like 1999 all the way to like 2010, and it's just a bunch of no's, 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 and it's things that's out of your control, so it's all these gatekeepers that can tell you no, or even before you can act, you have to go and audition after audition, so it wasn't even like I was a professional actor, it was more like I was a professional auditioner. Once I came into stand-up, I'm like, yo, I'm about to self-represent myself, I don't need no agent for comedy, I have a business acumen from other things that I've done in the past, I wanted to go to the general market, which is basically a cute way of saying white people, and not be in an urban market, which is of course black people, because I knew I can make black people in Chicago laugh. I've been doing that my whole life. I purposely was like, you know what? I'm about to go to Zany's on the north side. And so I was doing showcases, and then you get to be invited to do a six minute showcase, and then you get to do a 10 minute showcase. And so for me, early on, I really had a business mind on Here's the path that I'm going to take. That's what I'm talking about, man. Being a college student is dangerous these days, man. <laughs> dangerous. School's getting shot up. Northern Illinois, man, that's not, well, nothing funny about that. I'm, I'm not going to joke about that. But it's, it, what's funny to me is that you used to go to school and sit in the front of the class. Now you like this by the accident shit. <laughs> uh, his book bag too big. I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> 2010. Um, at the time I'm working at the Boys and Girls Club, I had been working there for a few years, and I really wanted to be doing comedy. I had started in college, but at this point, shows are few and far in between. I'm working 12 hours a week at a nonprofit, making $20,000 a year. Uh, I just finished school a year before, and I'm just like, I really want to be doing comedy. And I was sitting in my office one day, and I, I thought to myself, I said, I'm telling kids every day to follow their dreams, and I'm not following mine. So I quit that job, and I moved back to Chicago, and like, any college graduate that was unemployed, I moved back in with my parents. I was living in the basement, and I just kind of hit the ground running. Over the course of a couple months, this competition pops up. Uh, WGN Chicago's Next Big Comic, they partner with Zanies. We looking for Chicago's Next Big Comic. I entered into the competition, and it was one of those competitions back in the day where you had to do a video, and you put it on the website, and then everybody had to go and select the person that they thought should be uh, the winner. I had been doing open mics every night, and I needed a clip, so I had this one clip that was like, it was a solid clip, and I think I said shit like one time in it. So the, the producer, when I submitted my clip, he's like, you can't do that. So I like put like a little beat. What up, uh, my name is Calvin Evans. Um, just moved back to Chicago. I was a little nervous coming back because um, Chicago is the only city where the cost of living going up and the chances of living going down. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> you know, people was getting messed up in Chicago. And I saw somebody get shot at for walking on somebody's grass. It struck a nerve me. I had to do something about it. I was like, uh, Grandma. Grandma, put the gun down. Grandma, put the gun down. It's just, it's just grass. Get roll back. <laughs> you know, she's stuck in her way. She old, you know? And he was like, all right, cool. We'll pass it through. And then for like two weeks, you, you got you guys have to get people to vote for you every week. Just vote, 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 vote. I'm going through the clips, and I'm looking like, eh, I'm watching the clips, eh, whatever, whatever, you know. And I see this other black guy. Uh, his name Michael Isaac. I remember checking out the competition, going and looking, and uh, I saw this one guy that was like super funny, and uh, his name was Calvin Evans. I'm looking at his clip. His clip is at Zany's. I'm like, this motherfucker won. He, he, his clip at the place already. How could I? I, I can't, I'm not gonna win this. So I reached out to him. I was like, man, bro, you, you actually pretty funny. I'm in the competition as well. And I just want to tell you, man, you, you funny. So I, I don't think we could vote for yourself. So I actually put a, a vote in uh, for him. Cause they only taking the top four to, to perform live. My little sister sits at the, at the kitchen table all night. She just click, hitting the button all night. Just vote, 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 vote. She just voting for me. And uh, a week later they released the top four. I'm in the top four. We go do the show and I was never, I was so nervous. That was the most nervous I've ever been in my life performing comedy. 
Here they are, the four you picked from ten people, ten up-and-coming comics here in Chicago. They are Holly, Calvin, Scott, and Ryan. Yeah, I know. Calvin, any fears for tonight? Any, any nerves? Uh, not at all. I just hate that I would have to hurt these guys' feelings. <laughs> Don't touch me. <laughs> Packed room, they got cameras on, and we only got two minutes. And I go up second, and I do my joke, my two-minute joke, my time, and I get off stage, and the crowd erupts. It's like, ah. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the night, they announced the winner, and I won. Four comics took to the stage at Zany's last night, but there was only one winner. Calvin Evans, the winner of our Chicago's Next Big Comic Contest. Hey, you were there. Calvin won a 20-minute opening spot at Zany's on a weekend. I was, I was so happy that I won. I didn't even stay to talk to him about it. It was like, you won. I was like, thank you. I walked off stage and just left. Uh, I, I like to say I, I, I let him win a competition. I was Chicago's next big comic. And that was like my intro into Chicago comedy. The first few months that I'm back in Chicago doing comedy. And that's when I felt like, okay, I made the right decision. So the following year, 2011, I'm trying, I'm still figuring out every night, open mics, and then they had this, another competition. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking competition king. <laughs> it was the, uh, you can win, uh, you can win a, a, a one-year scholarship put on by Puma because uh, Second City was celebrating 50 years of um, uh, them being uh, in existence. You can't say comedy in Chicago in the same sentence without people saying, oh, Second City? And then you try and explain to them, well, no, Second City is improv. I do stand-up. Well, what's the difference? So to kind of kill that noise, I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and start taking some classes at Second City. So when people ask me, I can say, yeah, I did that too, but I'm doing stand up. So I submit to this, you know, whatever you got to do, you got to write, write an essay and you got to like submit a clip. And I had a stand up clip. I get the scholarship. So that's how I get into Second City because the, the entire year I want to go there, but I'm living in my father's basement. I'm, I don't have a job. I'm just doing comedy as much as I can. I'm making $75, $50 here, just enough to pay my phone bill. So I started at Second City. I believe I started with IFA, Improv for Actors. I didn't really have to start at the beginning because I already had previous experience with acting. So I do IFA one and two. I get into conservatory and I'm able to finish Second City in like a short period of time. Now as a stand-up comedian, I'm in Second City. All these people in there, it's like ensemble work. So they in there clapping, they warming up and everybody high-fiving. I'm like, yo, I don't, I don't do this. You know, I'm used to being on stage by myself telling my jokes. But in that process of like improv, because it's so big in Chicago, I realized the power of improv, like when you see people uh, like comedians like freestyling on stage and he's just fun, he's like, damn, that's improvisation. That's a muscle that, that can be developed. And that's what I got from Second City, being able to like watch people create nothing from, from something from nothing. I'm still, still kind of just doing my thing independent. I'm still figuring it out. So I featured at comedy clubs. I'm creating, before it was called content, I'm just creating funny videos. I'm putting them on YouTube. And periodically, Mike, Mike would hit me up, you know. I hadn't talked to him, he just hit me up out the blue. Hey man, let me get your number. And he would talk and he'd be like, man, you're doing these, these great videos and stuff like that, man, and it's inspiring. He was already doing a lot of things, kind of similar to me. The only difference, he was like an editing genius. So he was doing all these little short sketches and putting them on YouTube. I remember one he did was uh, State Farm instead of State Farm. Give me the purse, bitch! Cannot believe he just stole my purse. Like good, good homie, State Fam is there. What's going on? He just stole my purse. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just glad you pay your insurance. Yes. And uh, it was a, a breath, breath of fresh air for me because I was the person in my circle that everybody was always waiting for the next thing. Mike, when we gonna do another show? You know, Mike, when we go shoot something? And I'm just like, man, why y'all not coming up with ideas? Why it always gotta be me? 
And I'm looking at him, I'm like, man, you doing it all. I, I saw him in a, in a Walmart commercial. First shop your way, member, right? Yeah. Well, you get points with every lease. <laughs> so I'm watching him do all these things from a professional standpoint, and I felt like I was doing all these things from an artistic standpoint, where it's just like, I'm true to the art form. Like, I want to touch and do every single thing creatively, but I, what I don't have is the packaging that he has. I mean, he a clean cut dude. He wearing suits and stuff on stage. He, 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 he working corporate gigs, McDonald's and stuff. I'm like, God damn, like I want to get there. We also had our own path and that's what made it pretty cool. You know, I was doing things, he was doing things. And then we would intersect and come, to, come together and sometimes we'll pass each other up. And, uh, but we always stay uh, pretty close and, and connected with the next moves that we wanted to make. So I had pitched this idea to Bert Haas, the booking manager at Zane. He was like, hey, can I get a show? I think it was like every Monday uh, of the week. Uh, I want to call it the Michael Isaac Plus show. So it would be me plus another guest, like a comedian. Uh, I had like a musician at times. So it was just like Michael Isaac plus somebody else. And so as the, the show progressed, uh, it would be times where Calvin would be like, man, so who, who on the show? And I'd be like, man, he's, me and you. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of turns into we'll go on stage and I'll be like, man, uh, you seen him here? You seen him in there? Put your hands together for Michael Isaac. And I'll bring him to the stage. Yeah, then now I'd be on the stage. I'd be like, man, y'all just saw him. Y'all gonna love this next man to come to the stage. That's here for Calvin Nevis. So that's, I think, we, we yeah. also would be like, man, you, you gonna go get him? Yeah, I go like, get him. We'll start <laughs> off together. <laughs> you gonna go get him? Go, yeah, yeah, go no, get he, him. Just, he just walked in. Let me yeah, go, yeah, let me go yeah, get him. Yeah. And then I walk off stage here. Yeah. We, we did that for a long time. Yeah. To the point where eventually the show went from I, right, we like bringing each other to the stage to we just started out on stage yeah. and I think it was just one show we just stayed on stage for like an hour and a half yeah. Yeah. and we was you know telling jokes and then we kind of found like this uh, harmonic balance where it was like this give and take where we can talk right. on stage at the same time and we found jokes that were like either similar or kind of had like some overlap and then it was just like damn let's let's just do this yeah let's do a duo and I remember talking to uh, Bert you know Bert been around for you know, decades in comedy. And he's like, you know, that was a big deal, you know, back in the 80s, like, like comedic duos. And we was like, for real? He was like, yeah, but it was the money. He was like, they, they broke up, you know, and they, they got tired of splitting the money and stuff like that. And I was like, man, me and Calvin, we don't care about no money. Yeah. I take 90%, he always cool with the 10. I ain't, I ain't never say no shit like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean <laughs> but you took it, you know, remember that again, was it like a thousand dollars, I gave you a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I, kill, I kill you. <laughs> but we was like, man, it ain't about the money. And it was more about the, the impact that we was having on stage, which is a good point, I think. It's like a, a natural path that you take here in Chicago, where it's like you kind of want to check all of you know, the boxes before you go on. So it was like, all right, we're doing stand up. You know, we're doing acting. Let's hit this improv. And it was almost these sets of things that people were creating, like, oh, you have to do this. And in doing that, we built those skill sets. Yeah. And that's where the Isaac and Evans really started taking off because it wasn't just like we was just up there talking shit. We also had these skill sets. At that time when we were building Isaac and Evans, we started being like, all right, come on, let's create content. Again, content wasn't, in, it wasn't called content yeah. back then. It was just, oh, let's create a YouTube channel with skits. Right. And we started the Mahichi Company, Make It Happen in Chicago. All right, Michael Isaac and Calvin Evans have joined forces to form what they say is the first all-black stand-up comedy duo. So they're headlining the set of shows at Zany's this weekend. Michael Isaac and Calvin Evans are joining us now, both born and raised in Chicago. Very fun of people. Thanks for coming on here, guys. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having us. Hey. We both were having similar experiences where people was always telling us, man, you're super funny, you're super talented, but you know, if you really want to make it, you got to move to L.A., you got to move to New York. You can't just stay here in Chicago. And we both kind of bucked at it. Like, mm, is that really true? Because that's what we were so, we, we both recognized that a lot of people in the entertainment industry would leave Chicago, go to LA, go to New York, make it big, but never come back to Chicago to build other people up. They'll come back hometown hero and now they're selling out arenas or selling out theaters. And people are like, oh yeah, da, 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 that's such and such. But then they'll either go right back to LA or go back to New York and never really be part of the community in Chicago. 
And so we wanted to do something different. We're like, man, what would happen if you actually built up a network? What if you actually did the work? We all wouldn't have to leave. We can make it happen right here in Chicago. And it sounded good, but it didn't really work. You, you realize like when, when nobody invested, like you invested in something, they really kind of just taken from it and not really add to it. Once we saw that, then it was just like, all right, let's venture off and do other things. And that's when we came up with BSP, the Bike Safety, yeah. bike bike safety, safety Patrol. Bike Safety Patrol, yeah. Do you know the rules of the road? Yeah, we pitched the idea like, let's start creating content. If me and Calvin doing all this work, let's put a pause on the other comedians right now. Let's yeah. kind of focus on how we can get money. Divi, it was the, when bike sharing yeah. first came out, you can rent the bikes around downtown. Cause Divi, Divi just popped up in Chicago. It didn't exist right. and then it just popped up. And like you said, they, they didn't, no, tra no training, no helmets. <laughs> we didn't even have bike lanes like that in Chicago. Right. And they were just like, yeah, ride bikes in the street. So yeah. we created this thing where it was like, look, why don't we do a safety video, but make it comedic. And mm -hmm. We pitched it to Divi. We had a whole like pitch and everything. Could no, do. not even a pitch. So we actually we shot it. We had so uh, imagine Reno 911, but for bike safety patrol. <laughs> so I got a fake mustache on. We got on Lut shorts. We got on polo. We done we done got the Divi logo. We got high socks on with with black boots, gloves, gloves, yeah. helmet, sunglasses, the aviator stuff. So we show up to Divi. We I don't know how you got the meeting, but <laughs> we show up to Divi in character, and and we sitting there in character. Like, it ain't no conversation, it ain't no, all right, we finna do this, we just show up and we sitting there. So the guy come in, uh, he like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, character, I mean, we, we hit that shit hard for like 10 minutes, we showing the video. And he like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so, I, we, we doing this. We doing it. So we, we convinced Divi to give us a lump sum of money to mm -hmm. shoot a series of safety videos. We went through what do you want people to know when they ride the bikes, how to dock bikes, all this, all this safety bike, um, lane, all the rules to riding a bike in Chicago. We went to one event and we rolled in on Divi bikes. We hurried up and rent them. Yeah. And we rolled into the event in character on the Divi bikes. It was like, motherfuckers was dying laughing. This how, this how cool it was. Divi made some BSP bikes for us. Sure did. They, made, they added like lights, the horn sure that we did. had. I got, it was, it, was, it was the coolest shit ever where it was like, yo, this might be the thing that we can take from Chicago. New York has city bikes. Um, they got, it's like kind of like, just kind of growing. Right before we supposed to put the video out. Mm. They like, oh, just wait, don't put it out yet. Right when we about to release the video, oh, not yet, not yet. Somebody gets healed, hit and killed on a Divi bike. The first bike sharing death in the history of bike sharing. This, this lady gets killed in Chicago, hit by, and here's what was the fucked up part. <laughs> you gonna laugh? We had a joke. Remember the joke oh, we had? Oh, in the, in the, in the video, in one the of the video, videos. we was like, you gotta wear a helmet. A a lot of people uh, ride bikes without helmets, and they die. What's the worst you've ever seen out there? Oh, shit. Man, <laughs> you don't even want to know. 18-wheeler semi-truck, hit a guy, hit, pop, just like that. Pow, decapitated. You ever step on a grape? It was worse than that. You ever see somebody's thoughts leaking out, leaking out their head? I saw him. I saw his to-do list just leak out on the curb. All of it. He didn't even get good milk. He was supposed to get milk. Ah, man. Wear your helmets, people. Wear your helmets. That's we all you got to do. You just we can't set it up. Hey, I mean, is uh, twenty one forty seven? Oh, that, that's all it was. Twenty one dollars forty one seven. I mean, that, what is that? Five cups of coffee? That's two cups of coffee. Is it two? Yeah. Well, I like caribou. Well, you go. Okay. Well, I go to caribou. You, you know, that's, it's a little cheaper, but you know. But wear your helmets is what we're saying. Just wear your helmets. And uh, helmets. Helmets. See, model citizen. Look at that. And the chick gets hit by a truck mm. and gets killed. And we like, well, just cut that joke. They like, no. Nah. Because cause the, 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 the idea of the thing was it was very in your face and it would have just been insensitive. So that just kind of, it kind of just went away. Out of all the no's we were getting, we finally got a yes and got money with it. So it's yeah. like, yo, this chick about to work with, with Mahichi, the production, Mahichi Studios. Yeah. So that was just another thing that, God damn. You need to go back around and go the proper way. Come all the way back around and then park the bike. I'm five feet away from the stand and you want me to drive all the way back 
and come back around. Listen, Mike, Mike, you hear that? You hear that? It was the echo. Because he just said the same damn thing same you just said. Thing that I just said. Get on the bike and get the hell out of here. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. That's okay. You look. Put your kickstand up, man. Put your kickstand back up, man. I ain't. Hey man, can we talk to people like man, that? Man, I was so nervous. I don't know. I don't know. Are we... It's like something just took over me, man. The bikes, the uniform, man. Is... Did, did I go too far with the knuckle sandwich? I was right on top. I can't believe he actually he actually did. He listened man. to us. He came all the way around. Man, man we better get back to the office before we get in trouble. All right. $250,000? I was living in my father's basement eight years ago. And then... They say the only caveat is you can't do stand up. Like, but that's what y'all, but y'all saw. Y'all had me come in and y'all told me to be funny and I improvised and I did all, all the shit that I worked at for all those years. I did it and here I am. You got it. It's like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Just be, be the person that we need you to be. I'm, I'm being told to take your, your identity, the thing that you've worked to create, this voice that you created, get rid of that and just, you know, put on a, on a polo and, or a suit jacket or whatever the fuck they would have me in and be that person. And, I did, I, I turned it down.